Alright, hello and welcome. My name is Jason Welsh. In today's episode we are going to be talking about graphite paint. Um, so, you know, I've been electroforming for a little while. Um, made a few videos if you've ever watched them. If not, I would highly suggest checking them out. And in those videos I mentioned how to make your own graphite paint and then I kind of go into other products that are already out there. So I'm going to do that again because it's been quite some time since I've updated those videos and the fact that, you know, as we learn, we, we should probably update. So I got some stuff. Um, first off, let's kind of look at commercial brands, okay? And I don't mean to diss products, but I really hate wasting money on things. So I know you don't like wasting money on things either. I'll go through the goods and bads of what the paints do. You know, sometimes they're all good, sometimes they're <laughs> complete crap. So here's Midas, um, the good of the product. Um, it goes on, the product, and then it dries. Um, then it takes a really long time to get a coat of copper to build up on it. If you're very patient, it will eventually build copper onto the surface. It does take a little bit longer than what I've noticed on other brands. The thing I do like about this product is it will go on plastic, uh, like ABS plastic, and it will go on to SLA material. And I don't know if you know what SLA material is, but it's a new form of 3D printed plastic. Again, you have to be very patient. Um, I warn you with this material. So, eh, don't like it. Sherry Hobbs, um, good material, awesome, really good for metal, insects, whatever. Um, the only thing it didn't work on was wax. And it would, but you had to put lots and lots of coats on it. So, I haven't found a material that it hasn't worked well on. Um, other than that, it's really good. Good material. Sherry Hobbs is amazing. Now, let's talk about those people that just don't want to go out and buy commercial stuff, right? I know who you are. It's okay. And the people that want to do wax. Okay? This stuff's good. So, this stuff is 50% Mod Podge, 50% Graphite Powder, and get the matte finish Mod Podge, by the way. Now, this stuff can be thinned, pretty thin, and what I like about it is it stays the consistency of which you make it as. In other words, it doesn't dry out. I've had this thing open once in a while, like I left it open for a good four or five hours, and I came back, it was good to go. Um, if I put, like, let's say the Hobsters stuff out there, you'd have to add some more distilled water, which still worked, so good for that. Um, this stuff, though, if you leave it on your brush, you're done, okay? You gotta rinse out your brush. Um, the Hobsters stuff, I'd, I'll tell you, you can leave it on your brush, and you can just go like this, and it comes right off your brush, and it just flakes off, which is amazing if you forget to uh, wash your brush every once in a while. This product, got to wash your brush out. Okay, so how much water do you add? Um, I got about 25%. I, I don't measure it. I just mix about, I know, 50-50 of this, but I'll add a distilled water until I like it. And here's how I judge it. I use wax, okay? So if you don't have wax forms, just go grab a candle. You know, that's a good way to do it. By the way, think about that, you know, little tiny candles and you paint cool things around them and then you electroform them and then what happens is you burn down the candle and what happens? Well, you get this cool freestanding electroformed piece. Pretty sweet, right? So check this out. That's what I mean by that. So if I paint this on the surface, you notice that it doesn't break up. Like it goes on solid and it dries. 
I haven't found a surface that this does not stick to, too. And believe me, wax is kind of tricky. Um, so I know that mine is, doesn't work at all. I won't even go with that. I have never tried safer solutions, but I've heard mixed reviews on it. Okay, so the hopsters did work, but you see how it kind of it breaks up, and then you got to go over it a couple times, and <laughs> so eventually it gets on there. Eventually it works. Um, again, I don't want to diss this product because I've used it so many times and it works out, but that's what made me switch there. Just that annoying feature right there where you have to kind of go over the surface about 13 times to finally get it coated with wax. Other than that, it did work eventually. The Mod Podge is a little longer for the drying time. Uh, this stuff's almost to the point where you can put it in in about two hours. This stuff's about four hours. Okay, here's another benefit to using the Mod Podge. Texture. Okay, so I have a lot of texture tricks that I couldn't do with the hobs. Because this is, acts as a clue along with a paint. You can do some amazing things with um, solder, solder balls or solder steers. So you take solder. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. See the little tiny thing? Okay, so you can fake texture. And you can kind of see that on my ring right here. See these, these spheres? Like those are the fake ones and those are the real ones. But you can see the difference. But you can still make texture. Okay, so here's an example. This one's already been painted, but I guess I can put another coat just for fun. So I'll, I'll paint a little bit of the area. And I'll take these spheres and drop them into the paint. Easy as that. Let them dry and throw them in your tank. And you can put texture wherever you want that way. Another cool thing. Now some people are going to just go like, oh my god, don't do that. But again, I've done it so many times, it works so well, I'll let you be the judge of not doing it or doing it. But this is steel wool, the very fine stuff. While the paint's wet, go like this. Just a little texture. Okay, now let me see if I can zoom in on that. You see the little, yeah, you can see it. That stuff will add all kinds of crazy goodness to that area. So let it dry four hours. You know, be, be mindful about it. Um, I've heard you don't want to get steel in your tank. Again, I've never seen it do anything different in my tanks. My tanks still function. I've been doing this little thing on hundreds and hundreds of rings. And it, it, what's cool about it, again, it grows really neat texture in that area. You can also take longer strands, so you get the thicker stuff, which I, oh, I have a piece right here. This is real fine stuff, but it's, it's, a little, it's a little coarser, so you can see the strands. You take those strands, again, you want to see some awesome texture happen. You're going to have to trim this in some areas, but what I'm doing is just wrapping it around, around in that wet paint. And it'll have these really super cool kind of nodules that appear on top of those. Again, you'll have to trim in areas that you don't like the nodule, but what, what you'll do is you'll trim it off and say, oh, that's too much, that's not enough. But you have the option at that point because the texture is there. So that's another thing you can do with texture. Another good way to get texture on these um, is damage the crap out of your rings. Okay, so if you look at the texture on this, 
see it? So, a hammer. You take a hammer, cheap, real cheap hammer. You buy yourself a two dollar hammer. Yeah, see that? All that is, is taking and a Dremel wheel and I'm using one of those fiber fiber wheels from a Dremel. I don't know if I have one. Oh, yeah, here. And I'm marring the crap out of it with one of these. Sweet. So that's a lot of different ways to make texture on the surface. The last but not least is, again, start out slow on your amps and your voltage, like one volt. Let it cook for a little bit on one volt, like let's say three, four hours, and then crank it up to 1.3, 1.4, and tell me that doesn't make good texture, especially with these techniques. All right, so that is graphite paint and texture all in one video. Hope you enjoyed.